I couldn't think of a clever intro for this, so I'll just point out that this was a fun thing to watch. If you're curious of any uh, performances of one of the most iconic actors to portray the Doctor outside of portraying the Doctor. Because Tom Baker played the villain in The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. I hadn't seen this movie before. I knew of it, and I knew Tom Baker was in it. I also knew that it featured some Ray Harryhausen uh, stop-motion effects. Um, and I'm always game for those. Like, stop-motion effects like what Ray Harryhausen did, or heck, even going back to King Kong, the original of which I, I grew up on as a kid, they're not convincing. They don't look real, but they do look interesting. They are, when they're done well, they're visually fascinating to me. I, I think they are at any rate. So this had a couple of things going for it to, to make me interested in watching it. The first thing that I should say before I get any further into this, if you're going to watch a movie like this, or honestly, nearly any Sinbad the Sailor movie that uh, has been made, um, for English speaking audiences, you need to accept going in. You are going to see a lot of white people in artificial tanner. That is just what it is. I am not positive that there is a single non white actor in this. There might be a couple here or there, but like none of the leads, definitely. And also, all of them doing a vague not really distinct for where the heck it comes from, accent. So know that going in. Culturally sensitive, it is not. So if that is a hang up for you, if that's something that is going to bother it for, is going to bother you or is going to ruin it for you, just don't. Just don't watch. Like find isolated clips of just some of the stop motion animation, leave it at that. Okay? So I'm not going to harp on that because it is the nature of the beast. It's not like it's one aspect of the, like, it's the film. The film is a bunch of, of white people, mostly English actors, brown-faced to varying degrees, and pretending to be Arabic and praising Allah. So while it is not meant to mock uh, that uh, religion, part of the world, uh, ethnic groups, etc., that is still not really... Okay, like none of it's meant in harm. So like, if that matters to you, then maybe that might take the curse off it a bit. Again, you'll make your own call, call as far as that goes. I'm kind of a sucker for this kind of thing, not specifically the, uh, the brown face aspect, but like, I like swashbuckling adventure. I like pirates. I like Robin Hood. I like Sinbad the Sailor. I have a lot of fun with these kinds of adventures, these treasure hunts, these chases, these, oh, like, it's some sort of beast on guard with a sword. Like, I just enjoy that. I just like that. It's fun for me. And so, yeah, I had fun with this. Uh, there's also, like, a shocking amount of small touches that I'm like, oh, I, oh, <laughs> like, little things that I didn't expect to see, little moments that, like, just went a little further and showed a little more care than I expected. Whether it be the fact that, like, there's early on, there's a very quick scene of a dancing girl on the ship, but Sinbad comes back and, and goes like, okay, no, the dance is over. We gotta, we gotta head out. And the dancing girl leaves. And like the, the sailor's like, oh, come on. But it's all very respectful. None of them are grabbing for her. It is very clear that they're just, they just wanted the show to end. But there's like, despite the fact that they had a, a dancing girl, a skimpy dancing girl on the ship, it was treated with about as much respect as you could expect that to be. There's little touches like, okay, so Tom Baker plays um, basically a sorcerer. He's like, he's pulling on dark forces and it's a drain on him. Like they do surprisingly good aging makeup on him, you know, graying up the beard, um, adding wrinkles to the hand, to the face that aren't so exaggerated that it overdoes it. But it makes it clear like whenever he does this, it is a drain on him. And that was another touch that I actually quite liked because given the kinds of stuff that he can do, creatures he can summon, forces he can control, it would be very easy just to make him very overpowered. But to show that this is this is a toll on him makes the whole situation more dynamic because yeah, he can, he can summon something absolutely absurd and that's going to be a problem. But 
he makes himself more vulnerable by doing it. And that just makes, that's just that extra step to make it more interesting than it might have been otherwise. Uh, as for the stop motion, it's great. And it starts very early on. Like, this thing doesn't keep you waiting. You start out with some basic, kind of a little flying gargoyle. That's probably the thing you see the most. But there's some stuff later on with some of the creatures that's just, oh, it just makes me happy to see. I don't even really want to tell you what it is. Um, cause there was one in this, cause there, there's one creature that I kind of knew about cause I'd seen him on some of the posters and he might even be on the image that I'm using over there. I don't know. Um, but then there were some others and there was one in particular that comes in a little bit further than the, than the midway point that I actually called while watching it that this would be a thing, but I didn't know before the movie started. I'm like, Ooh, it might be this. And then it turned out to be exactly that. Um, God, is there any way I can allude to this so people who've seen it know what I'm talking about? Um, there, there, there is a um, a statue brought to life that I kind of called in advance what that statue would be of, and as soon as it turned up, I'm like, that's going to come to life. I bet you it is. And it did, and it made me very happy because, again, just so many... Ray Harryhausen did so many tiny touches. Like, that's... That's really what's great about his stop motion animation. Bad stop motion, I mean, like, actually, it's true of any form of animation. If it is, if you don't put it there, it's not there. So what's difficult about any form of animation, stop motion or traditional, is trying to add in all the little touches that make something feel real. Whether it be just the movement of breath, if it is meant to be an actually alive thing, or just little small, subtle movements so that it's not just going from point A to point B to point C. Adding those little touches to make it feel alive. Because if you don't add them, they're not there. As opposed to like if you have an actor performing something, even an actor in a suit, there are going to be those naturalistic things that they do just because of virtue of the fact that it is being portrayed by a human being. But none of that's there with stop motion or, or any kind of animation, but we're talking about stop motion here. It's not there in stop motion unless you put it there. And Ray Harryhausen puts so much of that stuff in there. And I love it. I, it's, I could watch his stuff all day long. I absolutely adore it. Um, as far as the actual Sinbad, he's fine. He's functional. He's a, he's a let's go adventuring hero. And he serves that. He's as charming as the story needs to be, not exceptionally um, charming. I think the um, I think the Sinbad the Sailor movie I used to watch when I was a kid, which I think was from the 40s, I found that Sinbad a little bit more charming than this one. This one's... Stoic is not the right word, but he's, he's closer to that side of the scale. I would have liked a little bit more of a flamboyant performance, but it's not what they went for, and he, he works. Um, he just isn't as much of a standout. Tom Baker... Um, you can, it makes so much sense because I did know that seeing his performance in this was part of what got him the gig as the doctor. And I totally get why. Even though this character is a villain, there's all these little moments, these little looks, the grin that you seem like that. Yeah. And you can, you can definitely see how somebody involved in the show, I think it was Barry Letts. Uh, I might, I hope I don't have that wrong, but like would see that and go, Ooh, the things he's doing with his part, I could mold that into the doctor. We, we could hand him this part. Like he could do something really interesting with it. And like, you see the little touches. That's not to say that this is the doctor light. This is a distinct character, but you can see all the little touches that would have drawn, um, the producers of the show to him to play the part. So as a doctor who fan, it's also fascinating on, that level. And it's just a fun time. There isn't really all that much more to say. It's here to be fun. It is fun. Uh, I will grant that the, the, the female lead in it uh, looks lovely. Let's not uh, mince any words about that. But there's really no reason for her to be there. Like, she doesn't she doesn't have much of an arc. She doesn't contribute much. She gets damseled late in the film because I guess that's why she was there. She's not bad. Again, a bit like Sinbad himself. She's not a drag on the film. It's just, it, it, she feels obligatory. She feels like, well, there, there's there got to be a woman. He's going to have to rescue somebody at some point, right? Uh, yeah, 
I guess. Seems like there's enough danger without needing to do that, but sure, whatever. There's also kind of a fun story with this um, sort of layabout who... <laughs> His father basically pays Sinbad to take his son off his hands. Be like, go like make something useful out of my worthless layabout son. He's actually kind of fun. I I, I was surprised how much I enjoyed him because they, they do a really good balance of like he he's trying, but he's so unequipped. Like and initially he kind of has that sort of take me. You know, take me back. I shouldn't be out here. Ah, indignation. But like, once he realizes he's stuck on this ship, he is trying. He's not built for this, but he's trying. And there's, he's not, he's not the annoying character I assumed he was going to be when he was first introduced. So again, just little touches of working better than I uh, would have automatically assumed that this thing would. And again, if you can accept the basic premise of a whole bunch of white people in brown face, um, if you can accept that, it holds up surprisingly well in terms of just a swashbuckling adventure with some great stop motion monsters. I had a real good time with this. Have you seen The Golden Voyage of Sinbad? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills, enables me to do this as my living, even if you can't help me out with that. Like, share, and subscribe. They all help me out, but don't worry too much about it. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can come on back. Next time you need a break. Time for me to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Goddess Elida, Oliver B, Tarak, The Thing That Goes Doink in the Anime, Ruth, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Loki Eris, that was a new one, that's why I paused, uh, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Fernabi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, Twisted Wishes, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, quite bearish, Rosalind Bennett, <laughs> Pau Barabajago, and Mary G. <laughs> if, if you want to support me as well and help keep these little buggers fed, um, check out my Patreon. Thanks so much. <laughs>